Hello again. Thanks for coming by to another edition of Painting with Pietro. So I'm going to show you a table that I've been working on for the last five months and some do's and don'ts, things I've learned to do and things I've learned not to do when it comes to refinishing a kitchen table. Let's get to it. Yeah. Now I'm a big uh, proponent of recycling, so this is a uh, failed uh, glass that I was trying to make into a drinking glass, this bottle. Anyway, one of my failed hobbies. Anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour the rest of the mineral spirits in here. Since this is my final coat, I don't want to dilute the polyurethane. So now I'll use this to clean my brush when I'm done. Great idea, right? And I'll just put it on the ground here. Okay, here's the tricky part. So this part's tricky. I just bought a bag of rags from Ace Hardware. This is some dude's shirt. And then I wipe off all the dust. And I've already swept my floor. And then I close the garage door so Nothing blows in. It gets kind of windy here in Utah County. You can also use an air compressor, but they're really loud. And uh, as I've gotten older, my hearing's really sensitive, so. And then this thing is kind of tippy, so what I do is I, I put old rags or these painting sticks to level it out. Or you can just use an old work glove, because when I brush it, I want it to be level. There we go. Because if a bunch of leaves blow on this after I've put on my uh, polyurethane. Yeah, that is not going to be good. I had a mosquito do a kamikaze, and he's on my kitchen table forever. He slowly kind of rubbed off after the past over the past four months, but I, I would really like this leaf to be as perfect as possible because hey, my family deserves a nice kitchen table. Don't you agree? Yeah, I think so. All right, so now one last step. This is a tack cloth and it kind of has beeswax in it. Removes dust and fine particles. Love this stuff. I got a pack of it for pretty inexpensively. I think it was like $2. And there's a slight oil in it, but this takes off the rest of the dust that would be a catalyst for a bad finish. Because you want this area, this surface, really, really clean before you put that last coat on. then I've already instructed my family not to open the garage door. And then I just have a uh, work lamp lighting up my surface here. All right, so, oh, that stuff is tacky. I need my rubber gloves, hang on. And here it is, my project. So this is the leaf of the kitchen table and I just sanded it because I've put three coats of poly on it and I do a really I do a really light sanding with 400 grit paper which is well it's 400 grit sandpaper um you want to make sure 
that you stay away from the edges. Uh, this is the second time I've stained it and I made it to the third coat the first time and I just was tired and I sanded right through the stain. You can't just restain. Yeah, I had to start all over. I tried. Anyway, so just be really careful. Basically, you're just sanding off really light bumps and you want to create kind of more of a absorbent surface for that last coat. Yeah. And then while I was sanding, just before I started sanding, I got out my mineral spirits. I bought these at Ace Hardware along with, I think I bought this at Lowe's. Anyway, um, I read online from a carpenter that if you soak the brush beforehand in mineral spirits, it helps soften up the bristles. So this has been soaking for at least 20 minutes. He recommended 10, but I uh, had to uh, deal with some other issues around the house. Anyway, so then when you take it out, you want to really gently let it drip out. And when I say gently, I mean treat this whole process like you're working with nitroglycerin. That's the best approach. So you don't want to shake it out. You just want to gently let it drip out. And then there's one more important step. Here, let me pause this. So we have this rocky area to our house and then I'll just kind of gently do that with the drips because this will help kill the weeds. So one on one purpose. And then I take this brush and I brush it on either newspaper, but I have this brown construction paper that works awesome. Hold on, I'll show it to you. So my neighbor gave me this. It's just a roll of uh, brown construction paper. Thank you, Ellen. And I just tear off a sheet and I wipe the brush. I'll show you. So I just uh, lay it out on the floor and then I just very slowly dry it out. Remember, slow. This is not a fast process. And then I store this paper in the house so it doesn't get all dusty. And then I use this to uh, start campfires with. There we go, so now it's dry, and now we do a mixture of mineral spirits with Helmsman urethane. So I did a clear satin, and I went with the indoor-outdoor because this is a kitchen table, and we're real people, and we make messes, and we're going to use our kitchen table. So I figured the indoor-outdoor would be really good. It protects it from sunlight. And this is my fourth coat of this stuff. Some people recommend five. Uh, I, I think four should be good. But maybe I should have done five. I'll find out in a few years. <laughs> anyway, uh, and you can do clear satin. You can do there are all sorts of stuff. And then you can get this tinted as well at Ace Hardware. So it's pretty cool. This was 30 bucks. The brush was another, what was this? 15 or 16 mineral spirits. Uh, this is my second can. And then I also had to buy another bottle of this for cleaning the wood. And then I bought some rags and some other stuff. So the whole project has been about $70. Scratch that, the whole project has been closer to $90. I had to buy a sanding paper as well. But the finished product, well, it was a nice uh, Mother's Day present for my wife. And yes, I do realize it's September now. Thank you, Sasha, for being so patient. All right, here's the fun part. I have to carefully pour this
You know what? I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to paint right out of here. This is a clean brush. So you do not need a lot on the brush. In fact, I gently just like let it drip. And then just, I just do one pass. That's it. And then I dip again. Remember, nitroglycerin. And then finally, the edge. And then I go by this edge part and I brush up any drips. Even though this is not going to show, I still like it to be nice. Few drips on this side, that's all right. Okay, so I got this idea. This is a mosquito repellent thing. They buy these for a dollar at the store. So I'm gonna put these by my project and helps. Oh, it stinks like those yellow candles. Lemongrass oil and citronella. There you go. Anyway, they're a dollar, and I've invested so many hours on this project, so I'm gonna just like put this right there and to help keep the mosquitoes away. <laughs> so now I'm gonna clean my brush and call it a day. So remember, nitroglycerin. You want to pretend that your poly coat is nitroglycerin. Do not shake this can ever. Only gently stir it with a uh, paint stir thingy. And then now I'll close this up. Make sure you do close this up. I had a can dry out. I just pushed the lid on. I was tired a couple of years ago and. Yeah, this is not close. You need to hammer it down with a screwdriver or a rubber mallet. And minutes later, it's already starting to dry. Looks to be a smooth final coat. I caught all the drippage. I don't see any puddles. I don't see any lines. That's good. Let's look at the other piece. That looks good. Well, we'll know more in about an hour or two. Yeah. But it's going to be tacky for at least five or six hours, and I'm not going to use this probably for another... I'll wait a full 48 hours before I put it back on the kitchen table and let people touch it. And again, my uh, trick of the day, mosquito buggables with lemongrass oil, granola something, and citronella oil. They're a dollar. Mmm, and they smell really good. Ooh, almost got that on the table. And then, yeah, wear rubber gloves. You don't want all that, all those chemicals on you. Blah. Yay! Done! And here's the finished product. So, weeks ago, I finished the last leaf. Well, the last two leaves. So this one turned out awesome. If you look at an angle, no puddles, no lines, a slight little puddle there, but you can barely see it. This one turned out a little bit darker.
for some reason had some pigmentation or I don't know, but it looks awesome. And this is the first time I've refinished a table of this size. I did a coffee table, but that was a lot easier. And this was four coats of that poly that you saw in the previous versions. And then I also did the uh, seats as well, which turned out those were a lot easier to do. So, yep. And that's the end of my video for painting with Pietro. Yeah, that, that's what I've learned refinishing wood. As you can see, that, that last leaf that I did was not completely my best work. Um, and that's because I had to start all over after I'd finished the other pieces. Anyway. Hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions below, let me know. And then in the description, I'll link the carpenter's video that I learned my technique from because I didn't come up with it on my own. So I don't want you to think that I'm this master in carpenter because as you can see, I'm not. I'm not a master painter. I'm still learning. And hopefully with doing these videos and refinishing more wood, I'll learn even more. Thanks again for watching. And thanks for coming by uh, Gadgets Anonymous. Again, uh, my name is Pietro and I was your host today. And I'll have more videos sometime in the next 48 hours. If you have any pithy comments, type those below and good luck with your DIY projects. That's all for now. Goodbye.